Well, folks, I hope you are ready for an absolutely insane week in the stock market. The next few weeks are going to be crazy in the stock market, but specifically this week that we're about to go into here, okay? I got to take you through everything going on in this market, okay? I don't think people understand the magnitude of the things that are transpiring right now in this market and how much of this is going to shift the market over the next several weeks and honestly for the rest of this year, okay? This is an extremely important week. I wanted to bring this to your guys' attention, everything across the board. Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Thanks for being subscribed, folks. Let's be very clear, okay? This week and over the next several weeks, this is like going to make or break your portfolio, right? And I hope it's been a tremendous year for you so far, right? Uh, I hope you've made a lot of money this year. And you should have, if you, especially if you're in anything that is, uh, you know, let's call it more growth-related stocks, the Teslas, the Metas, uh, Shopify, stocks like that, right? NVIDIA, AMD. You should be having a tremendous year this year. You should be making money hand over fist, right? Um, if you're short seller, maybe not so much. But I can tell you what's about to happen here is about to shift your portfolio in substantial uh, ways. And I'm not talking small money. We're talking about huge money, okay? So, all right, guys, let's get into this, okay? The first thing is... Not enough people have been talking about this, okay? We just had a major U.S. official go to China. Now, this is the first time in years this has happened, okay? Years. We have not had a, a you know, somebody of this magnitude in China in years, okay? Janet Yellen has been in China. Now, she's just about finishing up her trip now at this point in time. And I can tell you, this trip went, oh gosh, okay? This trip went about as good as you could possibly have hoped for, okay? Yellen says direct uh, productive Beijing talks are a step forward in, U in putting U.S.-China ties uh, on, a, on a sure footing. The U.S. and China have significant disagreements. Those disagreements need to be communicated clearly and directly, Yellen said in prepared remarks. But President Biden and I do not see the relationship between the U.S. and China through the frame of great power conflict, end quote. We believe that the world is big enough for both of our countries to thrive. Both nations have an obligation to responsibly manage this relationship, to find a way to live together and share in global prosperity, okay? I can tell you those words are absolutely massive because I can tell you the, the relationship between the U.S. and China has been deteriorating for five years now in a substantial way. It started with the trade war. That was the thing that really started to get things ugly. We had the trade war. Then, after that, we had Rona. Now, there was a huge resentment from the U.S. side that China caused Rona, okay? And you might have that belief. You might not. Whatever, okay? But the bottom line is that a lot of people in the United States of America and a lot of officials in the United States of America that basically blame that whole situation, the shutdowns, everything, on what happened in China, right? So that happened, right? Then we had more scary commentary from kind of both sides back and forth for the last few years now at this point in time. So these are the two biggest economies in the world, right? And let's be honest, both are still kind of reliant on each other. And these ramifications, if the relationship's not good, it reaches the stock market. It reaches countless corporations because there's, you know, many of our biggest corporations get substantial amounts of their revenue and profits from China, Okay. China also has a growing influence in other countries around the world. And if, let's say, U.S. and China are not, you know, friends, are not very friendly, that causes a lot of problems. Then you throw out what's going on uh, in Russia, Ukraine, right? That's a huge significant thing. And, and whose side is China really on in this? Are they trying to help Russia? Are they trying to play like, you know, they're not really friends with either side or they're friends with the West? Like, you know, there's that. And then you've got China, Taiwan, Okay. And so, nonetheless, folks, the last five to six years have been extremely messy between China and the U.S. China and the U.S. used to be very close, okay? As close as you could be, considering how different maybe some of our views are and how government should run and those sorts of things. But I can tell you the relationship's been awful for years now, and it's just gotten worse and worse and worse, up until basically this, this week, okay? Now... Uh, noting that the overstretching of national security does no good for the normal economic and trade exchanges, the Chinese side expressed concerns over the sanctions and restrictions imposed by the United States on China, the same statement said. The two sides agreed to strengthen communication and cooperation on addressing global challenges and continue maintaining exchanges and interactions, the statement said. Okay. Now, this is going to you know, if I had a guess, this is going to be a positive thing for the stock market. This does not mean we're out of the woods this week because we got some things that are arguably just as big, if not bigger. 
that are going to shift the stock market this week that we're about to get into. But what I can tell you personally, okay, is that trip Yellen just went on went as good as it could have possibly went. Okay, it couldn't have went any better than that. That was that was it. Okay, and so this, if you own any Chinese stocks, this is good news for you. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, if you just are an investor in the markets, that's a good thing. China Taiwan is an overhang over the stock market. It is something that scares people, that worries people. Okay, and if it is seen as the U.S. and China have a stronger relationship, then it's seen as it's not as scary because maybe communications there are better and maybe something won't happen there, okay? And so we'll see how things progress over the coming months and obviously coming years, but I can tell you this was a first step in, in a better direction for the two sides getting along, okay? Next up here, woo-wee, okay? CPI is coming out on July 12th. I'm recording this video on July 9th, so it's gonna be out in the next few days, okay? Now, the CPI release is absolutely massive. We do know, what do we know? We know that CPI has been falling dramatically for basically about a year now at this point in time. CPI peaked out about a year ago, and inflation has been dropping, 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 dropping. Pretty much month after month after month for a long time now at this point in time, okay? Now, there's some folks, in, really from the bearer side, that believe, you know, CPI is going to spike back up and the stock market's inflation fantasy ends Wednesday, right? You see stuff like this out there, right? Um, which doesn't really come as a surprise. I mean, a lot of the bears, oh, how do I put this? Okay, a lot of the bears have lost their entire portfolios this year or a great sum of those portfolios, and they're very desperate, okay? If you don't know, a lot of the bears either obviously short stocks, but a lot of them buy put options. And pretty much every bear out there was expecting the market to absolutely tank in the first half of this year. So a ton of them were buying options that expired in March, that expired in June, uh, that expire this fall. And these folks are losing everything on those put options, essentially, okay? They've either lost their portfolios or they're, they're you know, lost a massive chunk of their portfolio. So they're kind of grasping for straws. So they're hoping CPI comes in massively higher. So then the Fed has to continue to raise a million more times, right? Uh, then the market gets scared about inflation is not going away and those sorts of things, okay? Now, you know, some of these bears are saying it's a fantasy about, you know, the numbers coming down and those sorts of things. I think it's, to be quite frank, uh, it's a fantasy to assume that CPI is going to go back higher, okay, at least anytime soon. Here's, here's the actual situation, okay. Trueflation's had us in the twos this entire month, okay. This basically means we're guaranteed to come in with a number that's 3.4% or lower for, for a CPI for this month, okay, uh, being that trueflation's been the twos the entire month. It's just a big question of is it 3.4, 3.2, 3, 3, 2, 9, like I think that's a big question, okay. Now, not only is it going to be obviously getting very, very close now at this point in time to what the Fed wants the CPI to get to, which the Fed wants CPI around 2%, but on top of that, you're getting month after month after month drops and drops and drops and drops, okay? And so the rate of increase of inflation is getting to a much, let's call it a much less, uh, you know, scary number, okay? Now, this matters significantly because the Fed obviously paused rate hikes, but now the thought is they're going to start raising rates again, okay? Now, I can tell you they should not, okay? Especially given that we come in at a 3, 4, or a lower number. Why do you want to keep raising rates? Like, you, you've, got, you've got a Fed funds rate of 5% plus right now. You're going to have, let, let's say we're 3, 3 for CPI, okay? Um, and core is coming in pretty good. we got PPI coming down. Everything's going in the right direction, everything and we're getting very close to the numbers we need to get to if the cpi comes at three three the fed wants to get it to two we're getting pretty dang close and you've got a fed funds rate that's significantly above cpi so all you need is just a little bit more time to to play out here and next thing you know you're kind of at your numbers so for the fed to raise again i mean they can do it it's just it's no need to do it anymore at this point in time but we do know the fed way overdoes it on either side they either pump way too much money out there they keep feds funds you know at way too lower numbers for way too long of a time or they do it on the on the flip side right but that's not the most important point okay even more important than if the fed raises a quarter point because let's be honest okay the fed raising a quarter point or not does it really move the market that much especially now that fed funds is five percent plus no the more important thing out of whatever is going to happen here is what Jerome Powell has to say, okay? Jerome Powell has been extremely hawkish, 
basically meaning, you know, ah, oh, we're going to keep raising, you know, ah, oh, we're going to, we're going to, you know, kill down this inflation. We still got a lot of problems. You know, basically he's taking the stance of like, don't get excited about inflation. We still got a long way to go, these sorts of things. Okay. And kind of scaring everybody to a million more rate hikes. Now, I'll tell you this. Okay. If this man raises, if let's say we come in, let's say it's a CPI 3.3. Okay. If this man raises, you know, the interest rates, right? Fed funds rate. And comes in hawkish. The man should be fired. Absolutely fired. There's no need. If you have a CPI that's coming in and gets starting to get close to the numbers you need it to get to, and you then go ahead and decide to raise rates when Fed funds rate is massively above whatever CPI is at, and then you do a super hawkish tone, it doesn't make any sense. Like you gotta be kidding me. But we know Powell has made a tremendous amount of mistakes. And so could he make another one? Yes, but it would just be foolish. And that would just show me more like the man should be fired. Just flat out if he came in and was super hawkish. If he decides, you know, if we let's say we got that 3-3 number or whatever, okay? And he decides to raise rates. He better be kind of middle ground there. He doesn't have to be totally dovish, but he better be somewhere in between a hawk and a, and a dove, okay? Somewhere in there. Because the bottom line is for, for him to raise rates when it's clear the correlation and it's clear as day we're headed to where the Fed needs us to be, and it's like within the next few months, if he raises rates and then comes in hawkish, like I'm just like, you're clueless, dude. But we can't put it past him. We know how bad the Fed screwed up. We know how bad he's screwed up already. So he screwed up twice already, right? He screwed up at the end of 2018. Uh, you know, Trump scared him, and he was like, oh, crap, you know, I guess I can't raise rates because Trump's after me. Okay, you know, that was a huge screw up on his part. And we know he screwed up, obviously, in continuing to have Fed funds rate in 2021 at these insanely low numbers with the stock market overheating, with real estate overheating, with everything overheating, and just continued to pump money and just continued to keep Fed funds at nothing and slosh all that free money out there. You know, could, could he make a, you know, a third massive mistake? It's a possibility. But it would just show complete incompetence on his part. But we know he's already made two massive mistakes already. So to make a third, I guess you, it's a possibility, okay? So that's that. Now, by the way, he can come in hawkish. If, it, if CPI comes in at 4% or above 4%, come in hawkish. I would come in hawkish too if it's 4% plus. It's looking very unrealistic. We're likely coming in something under 3.5. And so, yeah, hawkish, it doesn't make any sense, okay? Now, next up here. We're about to get into massive earnings season. Did my camera just switch? I, I think my camera switched from my, my phone. I don't know. Okay. But anyways, earnings season's here, folks. Okay. It is here. Now, before we get into the, some super important earnings that are happening this week, let me tell you about the earnings I'm looking personally most forward to this year. Okay. Or not this year, but specifically this quarter over the next few weeks. Okay. Meta, why am I looking so forward to Meta's earnings? Okay. I want to see what the revenue numbers are. I want to see what the earnings per share numbers are. I'm really, really darn excited to see whatever Meta reports here. We do know now at this point in time, they've done most of their employee cuts. Uh, I'm sure they've, you know, still going to take some sort of cost, some negative cost in relation to that. So I'm sure that will hurt profitability at least a little bit. But I'm really, really excited to just see like what type of revenue earnings per share numbers are we talking here with Meta, okay? Next stock I'm looking very forward to is Tesla. And I'm looking forward to three things with Tesla, Okay. I'm looking forward to hearing what margins are. We know uh, margins have been shrinking massively for Tesla for many quarters now at this point in time. And we want to see margins stabilize or start going up again. So really excited to hear whatever Tesla has to say on margins. Really excited for anything guidance-wise. And uh, we know, no, I mean, Tesla put up an amazing uh, quarter this past quarter in terms of deliveries, obviously. So I want to hear, do they expect that to continue? Do they see weakness in the business? If Elon's on the call, which hopefully he is, what does he have to say? And next thing you know is Cybertruck. Like, what are we talking for scaling Cybertruck? Like, are we, are we thinking, like, this is going to scale in a major way, like, uh, Q3, Q4, uh, Q1 2024, Q2 2024? So we need more detail on Cybertruck. We need something more than just, you know, oh, it's coming. You know, we need, like, some concrete, like, here's how we're seeing this. This is the quarter. I feel like they should give it. This is a conference call. I feel like they should do it. And so that's what I'm really looking for with Tesla. And I'm really excited to hopefully hear details around Cybertruck and kind of what's the game plan here for how fast ramp's going to go. Any vehicle target numbers, their goals are. 
Uh, I really, if Elon's on the call, I want him to get into the nitty gritty there, okay? In, uh, it's enough times passed. We're starting to see a lot of cyber trucks in the road from Tesla employees and folks. You know, Franz was recently driving one around. We've seen several videos in the past few weeks. The time has come to, to get more into detail here and say, hey, here's our, here's our game plan as far as this goes, okay? Next stock I'm looking very forward to that I own uh, for this quarter is, is Palantir. Palantir, I really want to hear revenue and anything guidance-wise, right? We do know that Palantir is likely seeing an insane influx in customer interest in regards to their product, okay? We need to start seeing that play out in the numbers and obviously in terms of guidance for the rest of this year or future years. I want to hear what CARP has to say about long-term growth given the changing environment and how much these companies are focused on, uh, obviously, how much they're focused on AI. Are we talking about this company's going to go, going to go back to 30% plus growth a year? I want to hear, does CARP have an opinion on that? Because if we're talking about this is really an epic moment for AI, and we're talking about a company like Palantir that's supposed to have the best of breed product, then I'll tell you, damn it, we better get to that 30% plus revenue growth a, a quarter. That's where we need to get back to. If we really got it like that, and the demand's really there for AI, that's what we should get back to. So I want an analyst to ask CARP on the call, what do you think about getting back to 30% plus growth? Do you think you could recommit to that? If that man says yes, it's a game changer for Palantir stock, I can tell you that. If he's talking about, yep, we're, we're going back to 30% plus growth a year, huge for the company, especially with, you know, obviously the company, you know, being a profitable company now at this point in time, okay? Next stock I'm really looking forward to this earnings season. Obviously, I'm looking forward to all my stocks this earnings season, but next one is uh, Cheesecake Factory. I really want to hear what's going on with margins and earnings per share. I'm expecting margins to be going up considerably on a year-over-year basis. I'm talking about several percentage points. So I want to see what happens with margins and how is it going to shift EPS because that should help EPS in an absolutely epic way. So when it comes to cake, I'm looking very forward to that, okay? Now, this week, there's a few stocks that are reporting that are extremely important to kick off earnings season here, okay? One is Fastnell. So, Fastnell is a very important company to pay attention to um, in the market overall. At the end of the day, like, this is one of those companies that's going to let you know kind of how the economy is doing. And I think it's worth kind of keeping an eye on. What do they have to say? What are their numbers? Uh, I think that's important, okay? And Friday's huge, Okay. If you want to know how the global economy is doing, then know how all the banks are doing, right? And gosh, Friday, you're going to get just about everybody that you want to get, okay? You get JP Morgan, which is the one I'm looking most forward to. You get, oh, by the way, I had a, a, a just glance over this one. United Health. Did you know this is the biggest stock in the Dow? This is the biggest weight in the Dow. Let's go ahead and pull it up here, okay? I'll show you the exact weightings of the Dow in terms of, you know, biggest biggest ones to smallest ones. Wow, what a day it was on Friday. Holy smokers, that was a lot of green, no jokers, right? Uh, let's go ahead and go to Dow 30. And oh, it's already sorted for me. Perfect. United Health, look at that. This by because the way the Dow weights stocks is by, based upon share price. It's stupid. It's really stupid. But that's the way they do it for the Dow 30. Okay. So United Health is by far and away the biggest weight. So if you're thinking is the Dow going to move up big or down big, Depends on United Health earnings, okay? Uh, on what they have to report there and are investors excited or not excited, okay? So that's huge for the overall stock market. I mean, Friday's huge for the, you get the biggest Dow stock reporting and you got all these big banks. I mean, that's a make or break day for the entire market. And that will, that will move things for the entire next week after that, okay? You got City, you got Wells Fargo, you got State Street, and you got BlackRock, all reporting. I mean, that's who controls the world right there, okay? That's who controls the world. They're all reporting on Friday. So if you want to know how things are doing, I want to hear what Jamie Dimon has to say. Now, I love Jamie Dimon as a CEO. I think he's done terrific with JP Morgan over time. I, I don't think he could have done a better job. I think he's the creme de la creme. Uh, if I had to pick a second banker after him, I'd probably say Lloyd Blankfein for Goldman Sachs was always really good. But Jamie Dimon, okay, I'm interested to hear what he has to say, but I don't want to put too much faith in it. Because I'll be honest, Jamie Dimon's done a lot of flip-flopping over the past 18 months as, you know, being the CEO of arguably the most important bank in the world. He's, you know, sounded like, oh, everything's great out there, all oh, storm clouds, hurricanes. And so I, I want to listen to what he has to say. I'm interested to hear what he has to say on the conference call. But at the end of the day, I, I don't know how much faith I can put in his words. 
just because he's kind of been all over the place. So we'll see what happens there. At the end of the day, pay attention to the revenue numbers for these companies. Pay attention if they give any guidance out there, okay? Which, by the way, these companies need to start giving out more guidance. We're not, you know, back when it was Rona times, there was all the uncertainty about, oh, you know, this and that, and supply chain, blah, blah, blah. I can understand when companies took away the guidance. Don't take away your guidance anymore. Put out your numbers. If your numbers are wrong, then you got the ramifications of that, those numbers being wrong as CEO and CFO. But this whole crap about, oh, you know, it's too uncertain. Baloney, it's always going to be uncertain. It's never going to not be uncertain. Put your guidance numbers out there now, okay? I don't want to hear any more of this BS about, oh, you know, we can't do it. No, okay. Let's get the numbers out there now. Us as investors, we deserve to hear what those guidance numbers are. We can make wiser investment decisions if we have management's commentary on where they think revenue numbers are going, earnings per share numbers are going, those sorts of things, okay? Those are very important. Guidance on margins. You know, which this is, we're going to the second half of 2023. You're still using Rona as an excuse for not putting guidance out there. It's ridiculous, okay? Yeah, you know, do your dang guidance now at this point in time, okay? Now, next thing that's going to be huge this week is Meta. We know Meta's waiting on the market's gone up and up and up as the stock's gone up and up and up, right? And we know Threads is taking off like crazy. We should be at about 100 million users right now for Threads, somewhere around there roughly, okay? And uh, I'm on Threads, by the way. If you don't follow me on Threads, feel free to follow me on there. I'm actually posting more on there than I'm posting on any other social media because, you know, it's just easy to obviously post on there and whatnot. But in terms of this, how much does this move meta stock price? Because, I, you know, it didn't move meta stock price at all this past week. The market just kind of overglanced it. And, uh, I mean, if this thing hits 100, it's going to hit 100 million users pretty much probably while I'm recording this video right now. I don't know if you can really like just overlook this anymore if you're Wall Street. I think you've got to start factoring in like huge numbers for just this new threads opportunity in 2025, 2026, and in future years. Because, I mean, if this already had 100 million users less than a week in, I mean, imagine where this is going to be three months in, five months in, seven months in, a year from now. I mean, imagine the user numbers we're going to be talking about. Because... At first, you get, you know, whenever a new social media comes out, you have a certain amount of people that adopt it. We've never seen anything remotely close to this. And from any app or any website in the history of mankind, we've never seen these sorts of user numbers and adoption right from the go, right? But as time ticks on, more and more friends and family tell people about the app and are on it and are sharing stuff from it. And more and more people download it. That's how apps build over time. That's how you get to several hundred million uh, users is friends and family sharing those apps around. That's why all these you know, platforms have the easy share buttons. They want you sharing stuff because then that entices your friends or your family to go ahead and jump on the app as well. And so this app hasn't even gone through that cycle yet, right? That's a cycle that's going to play out for the next several years with this. This this is just the early adopters that we've never seen anything like this before. So I'm very excited to see kind of what happens with Metastock because I think a lot of people are underestimating the scale that this is going to be. I think it's going to be a pretty massive thing. So appreciate everybody joining me as always. Thanks so much, folks. It's going to be a make or break week for the market. There's a lot of so, such important things going on out there. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep you guys up to date with everything going on out there. If you're looking to apply, join my private group. See if you're a good fit there. Check out the pinned comment. You can apply there. And uh, yeah, we'll see if you're a good fit for the private group. Much love as always and have a great day.